Hello, my dear students. Under Labor Law second paper, today we'll discuss about the Employees' Compensation Act 1923. This act is given in unit number fourth of your syllabus. And as you all are aware uh, that uh, prior to this uh, deliberation, we have discussed number of important provisions of the Employees' Compensation Act 1923. This is Dr. A.K. Tyagi and uh, through this video lecture number 35, today we'll discuss about uh, section 10A, which talks about the power to require from employers statements regarding fatal accidents. And we'll also talk about the section 10B, uh, reports of fatal accidents and serious uh, bodily injuries. And, uh, and at last, uh, last but not least, we'll discuss about the section 11, which is about the medical examination. So let's uh, start with the section 10A, my dear students. Uh, section 10A, subsection 1 states that where a commissioner, uh, you know, uh, the commissioner is receiving an information from any source that an employee has died uh, means and the, the death of the employees because of the accident which has uh, accident arising out and in the course of uh, his employment then uh, he may send his registered post uh, through his uh, registered post on notice to uh, the uh, employee's employer and uh, requiring him to submit uh, within 30 days of the service of uh, this notice, a statement in a prescribed form. Uh, the, and uh, through this notice, uh, that employer will be asked to give the circumstances and attending the death of the employee and uh, indicating uh, means, uh, means whether in the opinion of the employer, he is or he is not uh, liable to the to deposit the compensation on account of the debt. So if anything goes wrong with an employee in the premises of the employer and that uh, uh, then the death uh, means, uh, when I'm saying the wrong means the death or the fatal accident is there and which was arising out and in the course of the employment, then a registered uh, notice would be sent to the employer of the employee and uh, uh, means uh, within 30 days of the service of this notice, a statement, uh, employer has to make a statement in the prescribed form and will definitely uh, give the circumstances attending the death of the workman and will uh, the employer will indicate that uh, whether he is liable to pay the or uh, deposit uh, the compensation on account of the death, right? And this is subsection one of section 10A. And subsection two of section 10A, that uh, if the employer is of the opinion that he is liable to deposit compensation, then he shall make the deposit within 30 days of the service of the notice. So if the employer is liable to deposit the compensation, then as per this section 10A subsection two, he shall deposit the same within 30 days of the service of the uh, notice. And uh, Subsection three of this section 10A, that if uh, the employer is having the, uh, means employer is of the opinion that he is not liable to deposit the compensation, that he shall uh, mention this thing in the statement uh, and in, uh, 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 the employer will also indicate the grounds on which he is, you know, he uh, disclaims this liability that he is not liable to pay any compensation. So in the statement that um, uh, uh, made by the employer, the employer will mention the grounds on which he is just uh, disclaims, uh, he, he disclaims this uh, liability to pay the compensation. This is subsection three of section 10A. And uh, uh, section 10A subsection four states uh, that uh, where the employer has no disclaims liability, Disclaimed liability means employer is uh, not having such uh, grounds uh, to indicate that he is not liable to pay the compensation. The 
commissioner after such inquiry as he may think fit may inform any of the dependents of the deceased employee that it is open to the dependents to prefer a claim for compensation and may give them such further information as he may think fit so means uh, uh, as we all are aware the uh, purpose of the or the object of the employee compensation act is that if the employee who is working in the establishment uh, and anything goes wrong any any death or any uh, uh, means uh, fatal accident takes place then and and the employer has uh, uh, means uh, has so disclaimed the liability right then uh, the commissioner after such inquiry as him thinks fit may inform the dependents of the deceased employee that uh, it is uh, open to the dependents to prefer a claim for compensation and may give them such other information as it may think fit so these are the important provisions given under section 10a under different subsections subsection 10a1 subsection 10a2 subsection 10a3 and subsection 10a4 now we talk about the section 10b uh, which talks about the reports of fatal accidents and seriously uh, serious bodily injuries so under uh, this uh, section uh, section 10b uh, subsection 1 where by any law for the time being enforced notice is required to be given to any authority by or on behalf of the employer of any accident occurring in in the premises which results means in the premises of the employer and which results in death or serious bodily injury the person required to give the notice uh, shall within 7 days of the death of the serious uh, serious bodily injury send a report to the commissioner given the circumstances and attending the death of the serious bodily injury so uh, that uh, uh, means uh, the because of this accident uh, which results uh, in uh, death or the serious bodily injury then person required to give the notice and uh, uh, within 7 days of death or the serious bod uh, bodily injury send a report to the commissioner giving the circumstances and attending death of the serious bodily injury and where provided that where the state government has uh, so prescribed the person required to give the notice may instead of sending such report to the commissioner send it to the authority to whom he is required to give notice so seriously body injury means here an injury which involves or in all probability will involve the permanent loss of uh, the use of or uh, you know permanent injury to any limb or the permanent loss of, of or injury to the sight or hearing or the fracture of any limb or the enforced absence of the injured person from work for a period exceeding 20 days so this will be treated as a serious bodily injury uh, i repeat uh, uh, my dear student that serious bodily injury means an injury which involves or in all applicability Oh, sorry uh, in all probability uh, will involve the permanent loss of the use of or permanent injury to any limb or the permanent loss of or injury to the sight or hearing or the fracture of the limb or the enforced absence of the injured persons from work for a period exceeding 20 days so this will be treated as a bodily injury and subsection 2 of this section 10b states that the state government by notification in the official gazette extend the provisions of subsection 1 to any class of premises premises uh, other than those coming within the scope of this subsection and uh, by such uh, notification uh, specify the person who shall send the report to the commissioner and nothing in uh, under subsection 3 of this section 10b that nothing in this section shall apply to the factories to which the employees state insurance act 1948 applies so this uh, uh, in this section shall nothing in this section shall apply to the factories with uh, to which the employees uh, state insurance act 1948 apply right uh, and there is a case also related to this uh, the a trehan versus associated electrical agencies and another 1966 scc you may refer this case uh, a trehan versus associated electric agencies and another 
and uh, you know, means uh, 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 you can refer you you just read that case where the claimant was the worker himself and the claim petition was in respect of the injury sustained in the course of his employment and on account of which he was said to have lost the vision of the left eye and then uh, you know uh, this employee was also an injured person under the employees state insurance uh, sorry insured person under the employees uh, insurance uh, act 1948 and he became entitled to the benefit under section 46 uh, c of uh, the said act and he approached the esi corporation to obtain the benefits available under the act and served a notice uh, to the management demanding uh, he also served a notice uh, where he demanded uh, 7 lakh rupees 7 lakh as compensation and followed the same by filing an application under the provisions of workman compensation act 1923 and claiming 1 lakh and odd with the penalty penal interest and cost and uh, uh, see uh, as per the section 53 of esi act 1948 as uh, an uh, you know in short person or his dependent shall not be entitled to receive or recover whether from the employer of the insured person or from any other person any compensation or damages under the employee compensation act uh, uh 1923 or any other law for the time being force or otherwise in respect of the employment injury sustained by the insured person as an employee under the si act so further section 61 of the same act states that when a person uh you know is entitled to any of the benefits provided by this act he shall not be entitled to receive any similar benefit admissible under the provisions of any other enactment so uh in view of the clear language of this section uh, the supreme court found no justification in constraining it as not uh, you know uh, taking away the right of the workman who is an insured person and an employee under the si act to claim compensation under the employees compensation act so the court was hands of the opinion that the high court was right in holding that in view of the bar created by section 53 the practitioner uh, sorry uh, the in view of the bar created by the section 53 the application for compensation filed by the applicant under ec means the employee compensation act was not maintainable so this is a means a good case you can refer that case my dear students and uh, so then uh, uh, if we talk about the section 11 uh, and different subsections are given under the uh, section 11 Subsection one states that where an employee has given notice of an accident, he shall, if the employer before the expiry of three days from the time at which the service of the notice has been effected, order to have him examined free of charge by a qualified medical practitioner. And uh, subsection two states that the state uh, uh, government may, by notification in the official gazette, extend the provisions of subsection one. uh sorry uh, we are referring this uh, so if an uh, employee on being required to do so by the employer under subsection 1 or by the com commissioner at any time refuses to some uh, submit himself uh, for examination by the qualified medical practitioner or in any way he or she obstructs the same his right to compensation shall be suspended during the continuance of such refusal or obstructions unless in case of refusal he was prevented by any sufficient cause from so submitting himself so this is again important sub uh, provision under sub section 2 and uh, sub section 3 that if an employee before the expiry of the period within which he is liable under sub section 1 to be required to submit himself for medical examination voluntary leaves without having been so examined the vicinity or the uh, of the place in which he was employed his A right to compensation shall be suspended until the returns and offers himself for such examination so this is again uh, the uh, one subsection subsection 3 of section 11 now section uh, uh, under section 11 subsection 4 uh, where an employee whose right to compensation has been suspended under subsection 2 or the subsection 3 dies without having submitted himself for medical examination as required by either of those of section then the commissioner if things fit direct the payment of compensation to the dependents of the deceased 
employ so this is again we can see that uh, commissioner is empowered to do so and the uh, subsection 5 state that where under subsection 2 or subsection 3 are right to compensation is suspended then no compensation shall be payable in respect of the period of suspension and if the period of suspension commences before the expiry of waiting period referred to in clause d of subsection 1 of subsection uh, of uh, sorry section 4 the waiting period shall be increased by the period during which the suspension continues so these are the important uh, subsections given in uh, uh, section 11 uh, and uh, one more subsection subsection 6 is also given the uh, section 11 where an injured employee has refused to attend any qualified medical practitioner whose service have been offered to him by the employer free of charge or having accepted such offer has deliberately disregarded the instructions of such medical practitioner practitioner then uh, it is and if it is proved that the employee has not uh, thereafter been uh, regularly attended the qualified medical practitioner or having been so attended they deliberately failed to follow his instructions or refusal to disregard or failure of was unreasonable in the circumstances of the case and the the injury has been aggravated thereby and the injury and resulting disablement shall be deemed to be of the same nature and duration as uh, they might reasonably have been expected to be if the employee had been regularly attended the qualified medical practitioner those instructions he had followed and compensation uh, if any shall be payable accordingly so uh means uh, you can see uh, these are the subsections under section 11 self subsection 1 2 3 4 and 5 and 6 so there are uh, certain important provisions and uh, where we can see that if the employee is not following the instructions and uh, means uh, refusing uh, to present himself or herself or submit himself or uh, herself for the medical act uh, before the medical practitioner right then this right of compensation of the employee may be suspended so uh, this is uh, uh, all about my dear students uh, the section 10 a which talks about the power to require from employers a statement regarding fatal accidents section 10 b which talks about the reports of fatal accidents and serious uh, bodily injuries and section 11 of the medical examination so thank you so much i believe uh, this uh, deliberation will help you thank you so much go through uh, the ppts and uh, refer the uh, direct also thank you so much take care have a nice day have a nice time